I wish I had more time to talk about the emperors who succeeded Augustus, with the partial exception of Claudius. They ranged from cruel and tyrannical to cruel, tyrannical, and totally nuts. They also, unlike Augustus, made no effort to disguise their new role as emperors, indeed as godlike emperors. And they made no effort to disguise the demise of the Republic. Caligula famously made his beloved horse a priest, and though this is more likely a legend, threatened to make him consul. Caligula certainly killed off most of his relatives. All of these emperors spent lavishly on their personal homes. When much of Rome burnt down in a fire during the reign of Nero, it was rebuilt largely in more fireproof concrete. We'll see some of the results before long, but this slide shows the spectacular home that Nero had built for himself. This is not, by the way, a college board required work. The most famous room is the domed octagonal hall, which was built of concrete with a stucco veneer and gilded with lots of precious gold. So notice that architects were beginning to realize the potential of concrete to open up space and move beyond rectilinear lines. Stay tuned for the Pantheon. In 68, the deeply unpopular Nero, who was the last of the Julio-Claudians, committed suicide. Out of the ensuing civil war, the commander of the Eastern Army's Vespasian, or Flavius to give his family name, emerged victorious. Vespasian would be succeeded by his son Titus, and Titus is famous for two important events in his short reign. Vesuvius erupted in 79 CE, and Titus took a lead in sending help to the survivors. While Vespasian was still living, Titus also took a leading role in defeating the Jewish rebellion against Roman rule. Vespasian and Titus made a point of turning away from the private enrichment of Augustus' successors, especially Nero. Instead, they embarked on a huge public building program, which included, most famously, the Colosseum. Domitian, the last of the Flavians, ruled for more than 15 years, and he continued the massive building program. He also, as you can see from the map, further expanded the boundaries of the empire. British Rome, for example, now extended to the Scottish border. But he was tyrannical and very unpopular with the Senate, which had him assassinated. For our purposes, what you really need to remember about the Flavian dynasty is they constructed perhaps the most iconic of Roman buildings, the Colosseum, and that's where we're going to turn now. So let's start with a video clip that gives a clear picture of the function of this Roman architectural triumph. The Colosseum was constructed of barrel vaulted corridors that held a huge oval seating area, the size of a 16 story building with seating for 50 to 80,000 spectators. The outer shell was covered by travertine, which was a kind of limestone, but the huge building was made possible only with the magic of the arch and of concrete. The decoration, as you see in the bottom left, involved engaged columns that bracketed arches. The column order changed with the stories, Tuscan on the first, then Doric, then Ionic, and finally Corinthian. You see the biggest, sturdiest column, Tuscan, on the bottom right. Next to it are the brackets that held the valerium or sunshade. The lower seats, oops, sorry. The lower seats, as you will see, were the higher class seats. And here's a diagram that shows the lower levels where the wild beasts were kept. And here are several more views of the interior, including the tunnels and rooms under the arena. Now, in the past, I've warned students that this work is very likely to appear on the exam. Now it's off the list, but we stuck it back on first because we wanted to, you to see a triumphal arch. Those are the arches that Roman uh, triumphant Roman generals marched through, bringing the spoils of war. And the second reason we included it is because the arch captures in one of its friezes an extremely important moment in Jewish history, which was Titus's conquest of Jerusalem. Just to get a few terms straight, engaged columns are not freestanding but are attached to the walls. And what order are these wall are these columns? They're Corinthians. See the circle of the Canthus leaves? And this is a famous image and one that used to show up in AP tests all the time. What we're seeing is the Romans removing the treasure from the temple in Jerusalem, including the unmistakable menorah candelabrum. The panel on the other side of the passageway shows Titus and his triumphal chariot. 
the bare-chested youth, it's easy to see him on the bottom panel, probably represents honor, while a female personification of valor leads the horses. I'm going to stop here and continue with the height and decline of the Roman Empire in my final lecture.